flash erupt, Beijing warships open fire as U.S. vessels enter disputed waters in South China Sea. Fears of open war in East Asia surged after Chinese warships held a live fire drill as U.S. naval vessels entered the contested South China Sea yesterday. Beijing's claim over the region overlaps with those of six other countries and is rejected by the United States. On Sunday the USS Mackin Island and USS Somerset entered the contested area according to the South China Sea Probing Initiative or SCSPI. The SCSPI is a Beijing-based think tank which tracks Western military movements in the South China Sea. Graphics produced by the group show the former arrived south of Taiwan whilst the later came via the Philippines. According to JS7TV, a news site affiliated to Beijing's military, shortly after Chinese warships conducted an unscripted live-fire training exercise using long-range weapons. The Unshi, Yangzhou and Guangyuan, all Type 056A corvettes in the Chinese Navy, took part in the operation. The report from JS7TV claims the Chinese exercise included the destruction of a mock enemy ship and missile interception tests. It was accompanied by video showing Chinese warships firing live ammunition during the event. The US, and other Western powers, refused to accept Beijing's claim of sovereignty over the South China Sea. To demonstrate this they regularly send warships on freedom of navigation patrols through the contested waters. One of a Chinese Communist Party-run newspaper, condemned the latest American moves as muscle flexing. It said, China should be prepared to confront the US in the South China Sea and Taiwan Straits no matter who sits in the White House. U.S. spy planes have also been reported flying over the contested territory. Acting U.S. Defense Secretary Christopher Miller is currently embarked on a tour of Asia. He was in Indonesia on Monday and the next day went on to visit the Philippines. Mr. Miller was appointed to his position last month after President Trump sacked Mark Esper, his predecessor. President-elect Joe Biden has announced retired U.S. General Lloyd Austin will be the next defense secretary. However, this would require a congressional waiver as General Austin only retired in 2016. Without authorization from Congress a gap of seven years is required between an officer serving and becoming military chief. If confirmed to the post General Austin will become the first African-American defense secretary in United States history. Explaining his choice in the Atlantic magazine Mr. Biden wrote, he have spent countless hours with him, in the field and in the White House situation room. He have sought his advice, seen his command, and admired his calm and his character. Tensions between China and the U.S. increased sharply during Trump's presidency over trade, coronavirus, Hong Kong, human rights, Taiwan and the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Chinese reports accuse the U.S. of muscle flexing after an American amphibious ready group quietly deployed to the South China Sea earlier this week. USS Mackin Island LHD-8 and USS Somerset LPD-25 entered the South China Sea on Sunday, according to Chinese state press reports, a Beijing-backed think tank that monitors U.S. military movements in the South China Sea, and publicly available satellite imagery. The move, not announced by the U.S. Navy, was decried in the Chinese press as a bluff and muscle flexing action that pundits believe would damage regional stability. In response to the American ARG operating in the region, a trio of Chinese warships conducted an unscripted, live fire drill in the South China Sea, Chinese language state media reported on Monday. The People's Liberation Army Navy corvettes were operating off the southern coast of China and conducted the drills the day after the amphibious warships transited into the South China Sea past the Philippines. U.S. Navy officials told that the Chinese corvettes were hundreds of miles away from the two American ships and that the Chinese operations were likely not in reaction to the U.S. ships. 
An official also said that two amphibious warships had not encountered any unsafe or unprofessional behavior from Chinese ships in the South China Sea. The ARG entered the region at the same time as Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller was on a regional tour that includes Indonesia, the Philippines and Hawaii. Mackin Island, Somerset and USS San Diego LPD-22 departed the West Coast in October to complete final certification exercises ahead of a deployment with the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit embarked. While the Mackin Island ARG and 15th MEU completed their certifications in mid-November and have since continued west towards the South China Sea, the Navy has yet to officially confirm that the units are deployed for national tasking. The Mackin Island Amphibious Ready Group or ARG and 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit or MEU are currently underway in U.S. 7th Fleet. U.S. forces routinely operate in the region to include the South China Sea as we have for more than a century as a commitment to regional stability and a free and open Indo-Pacific, Commander Myers Vazquez said U.S. Pacific Fleet spokesman. All of U.S. operations are designed to be conducted in accordance with international law and demonstrate that the United States will fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. The Navy has said the ARG or MEU was conducting routine operations without providing additional information. The months-long process for training and certifying an ARG or MEU for a deployment is well understood by allies and adversaries alike. Mackin Island went to sea in October to complete its Composite Training Unit Exercise or COMPTUEX ahead of deployment. The ARG or MEU left the U.S. 3rd Fleet area of operations in the last two weeks for the Western Pacific. The line for when a ship is in training versus when it's available for national tasking has become much thinner since the start of the global COVID-19 pandemic. In the past, after COMPTUEX an ARG or carrier strike group would return to port for upwards of a month ahead of the formal deployment. Now, to minimize the possibility of sailors contracting COVID-19 ahead of deployment, they quarantine ahead of the drills and then remain at sea throughout COMPTUEX and into the start of the deployment. U.S. Pacific Fleet has been inconsistent in announcing deployments of major fleet units like ARGs and carrier strike groups since current Commander Admiral John Aquilino took over in 2018. Aquilino, the Trump administration's nominee to command U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, has at times directed no notice when major formations deploy. Furthermore, South China Sea tensions have exploded after the U.S. sent a military spy plane into China's air defense identification zone yesterday. The Beijing-based South China Sea probing initiative said a U.S. U-2S aircraft took off from South Korea and passed near to China's east coast. The aircraft at one point passed within roughly 51 miles from the Chinese coast. The South China Sea think tank said it is not the first time the U.S. has flown a U-2 plane into a tense region of Chinese airspace. It said, earlier in August, a U-2 once flew into a previously declared no-fly zone, where PLA was conducting a live-fire military exercise. The Lockheed U-2, also known as the Dragon Lady, has been operated by the U.S. Air Force for 65 years. The aircraft first flew in 1955. Despite its age, the U-2 has a modular design, meaning it can be fitted with new technologies to ensure it can carry out modern missions. Lockheed say the plane fills intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance roles and can operate at heights up to 70,000 feet. The aircraft's pass close to China comes amid tensions in the South China Sea region between Washington and Beijing. In October, the South China Sea Probing Initiative told Newsweek the U.S. sends between three and five military planes into the South China Sea every single day. It is unclear what China's response was to the recent U-2 spy plane incursion. The incident did not appear to be mentioned in the regular daily press conference held by the country's Ministry of Foreign Affairs.